Fires, floods, wars, and retirement. Now, I know what you're thinking. How can we talk about retirement and finances when Israel and Gaza are on fire and Iran and other countries are threatening to also enter the conflict and Russia is still attacking Ukraine and who knows, China might attack Taiwan and people are dying all around us in floods and fires like the one on Maui a couple months ago or earthquakes that take lives and leave survivors injured and homeless and destitute. This year, hurricanes, floods, fires, wars, and other disasters are taking lives and ruining livelihoods. It's crazy, I know. In fact, I'm a Gen Xer, and my whole life has been a constant stream of bad news, it seems like. Imminent danger. Now, of course, it's nothing like the war and Great Depression that my grandparents faced, but a looming threat has always been there and actual blood and carnage and starvation somewhere in the world. In these decades full of bad news, some of it has been fabricated, or at least exaggerated, like, for instance, Y2K, that was a big nothing burger, or the giant hole in the ozone layer, or the always looming threat of total nuclear destruction. My whole life I've also heard about the complete and imminent failure of the social security system and corporate pension, uh, pensions. Any or all of these may actually happen, but we have other boogeymen and catastrophes that actually are happening, even right now, like floods, fires, earthquakes, and wars. Now, by the way, if you don't know, I am Douglas Lucky Larson, and on this channel, we talk about doing the things that matter most, creating an early retirement lifestyle that is secure, fulfilling, and sustainable, starting now. Because I have been shaped by the threat of disaster my whole life, I know people in my generation who have given themselves over completely to enjoying the moment. The attitude is, hey, life is short, so it's time to party. And that has not worked out well for most of them. Party animals do not usually live long and prosper. <laughs> Other people, like myself, from the Gen X cohort, have decided, despite the gloomy forecast, to continue to make long-term plans. Like maybe simply deciding to be less reliant on the government and much more self-reliant financially, physically, socially, spiritually. It's times like this right now when there are disasters and war and strong, even violent political divisions all around us that help us focus on some of the things that really do matter most. It's important to be aware of local and global troubles, but not get caught in paralysis, like a deer in the headlights just waiting for impact. Now, what are those things that most humans aspire to when they can think clearly and make mid to long-term plans? Well, I think Stephen Covey summed it up well in his classic book, Seven Habits, when he said, we all simply want to live, to love, to learn, and to leave a legacy. Now, especially because there's so much chaos and destruction and disagreement all around us, this is exactly the time to think really hard about you, what you want for your future and for your family, and not just financially, and not just some emergency supplies sitting in a bunker in your backyard. No, we're talking about a long-term plan regarding relationships, useful skills, and emotional resiliency. You've probably seen the story that keeps making the rounds on social media that supposedly black ants and red ants can live just fine together in a jar until somebody shakes the jar and then they will attack each other and fight to the death. Now, I don't know if this is really true and I've certainly never tried it, but the point of the little story is to emphasize that we should not fight each other, but instead find out who is shaking our jar. However, that still does not solve the problem because usually the ants have no control over the social or economic or political players who like to shake the jar. Instead, is there a way for you to insulate yourself from the turmoil or make such great relationships with your fellow ants that nobody sees the need to fight when disasters come? And they always come eventually. I like this other quote right down here that 
When life throws you doom and gloom, make gloominade. <laughs> so what's the recipe for gloominade? Uh, well, that's exactly what we're here talking about in every video on my channel. To take what you already have and make the best of it regarding financial security, uh, physical and emotional preparedness, and above all, to create the best relationships with family, friends, neighbors, church groups, and whoever else you come in contact with so that we all can be better prepared for whatever is to come. So let's briefly take a second to hit that like button down below, and then we'll break down some of these things to work on individually. And in just a couple minutes, I think you'll be feeling a lot better about your future prospects rather than just feeling angry at all the other ants or the people shaking the jar. Anger, even if it is well-deserved, still does not solve anything. And most of the people talking about doom and gloom don't actually have a solution except to say, stock up on guns and bullets and gold and wait till the world burns down. <laughs> uh, usually these same doom and gloom experts have a course or a kit or some gold bullion to sell you. Now, slightly less gloomy are the forecasters of an imminent recession that's always just a couple weeks or months away. And their only advice is to tell you to sell everything that you can and be ready to pounce on uh, inevitable bargains in stocks or Bitcoin or other kinds of crypto or real estate. Now, there is some merit in this, but there is also opportunity somewhere right now to improve your important skills, uh, strengthen relationships, and just start working on a business or investing idea. Again, right now, there's no need to wait for some possible disaster. So here are some real concrete ideas for you, not advice, just infotainment that might be helpful. If you want to invest and make money from your couch, I recommend following Gareth, uh, Gareth Soloway. Gareth Soloway, G-A-R-E-T-H. Look him up on YouTube. He's amazing. Or Jim Bianco. These guys are brilliant. They understand and explain macroeconomics and specific stock trades, including crypto, on a level that everyone can understand. Instead, if you are interested in real estate, I recommend Altos Research and Housing Wire for real data and trends. Not Nick Gurley or Jurley, whatever his name is, who always thinks that housing is about to drop by 50% in the next couple months. <laughs> That's been his mantra for quite a long time now. But who knows? He might be right. But I doubt it. Some areas of the country are seeing some real pain and pullback, like Austin, Texas, Boise, Idaho, Las Vegas, and even San Francisco, and some other places. But most areas are doing okay. Their housing prices are holding up. And uh, you got to live somewhere, all right? I like real estate investments, and I like them way more than stocks or crypto right now because houses pay me to own them. I personally bought two more homes just this last summer. They're beach houses in Northeast Florida, and they cash flow fantastically. I got them at great discounts simply because I made offers, even when some of these other voices are constantly screaming, don't buy now, wait for the crash. But if I see a good deal, I make an offer. If it makes sense, then I buy it. Um, I didn't just sit around and wait for the crash that may or may not come. A lot of these same people will tell you all about um, uh, the imminent uh, money printing that's about to take place on a catastrophic level. Well, what happens when there is hyperinflation? Assets, including real estate, go up. So keep that in mind, too. Again, I make offers, and I don't just sit around waiting for something to happen. I love single-family rental homes in great areas with fixed debt. I was a real estate investor and a landlord during the last boom and bust in uh, you know 2007 through 2011. And guess what? Even in a recession, people still like to live indoors. <laughs> and many people still buy and sell homes. Even in economically challenging times. Now, everybody needs housing. And if they're not buying a house, then they are renting a house. If they're not doing that, then they're probably living in a tent. Uh, don't do that. Now, I love this mantra. 
The easiest way to make a million dollars is to borrow a million dollars and let somebody else pay it off. And that's uh, been working out pretty well for me for the last 24 years. I believe that if you buy the right assets, it can work out for you too over the next 10 or 20 years. Now, if you like the idea of real estate, whether it's uh, individual homes or fourplexes or large multifamily apartment buildings or storage units or trailer parks or mixed use office space, I would definitely recommend all the great information that you can find mostly for free on biggerpockets.com, biggerpockets.com. By the way, they interviewed me a couple of times over the last few years. I think uh, my first episode uh, in their podcast, I think it was number 41, it's still available. Um, just Google it if you want to have a listen. Now, if um, you'd like to know uh, more about being emotionally, socially, and culturally resistant in difficult times, I can't recommend Dr. Chris Martinson enough. Chris is a great guy and insanely intelligent. I have been able to sit down with Chris a couple times at some conventions and uh, have some just one-on-one -on -one conversations. He practices what he preaches. He wrote a book called Prosper about resiliency along with his buddy Adam Taggart. And they don't just talk about bad things that might happen or that are happening. They're not just out to scare you or give you fear porn. No, they actually give detailed solutions that anyone can follow and work on right now. Now, if you're really determined to retire early and you are ready to make some sacrifices, the FIRE movement, F-I-R-E, Financial Independence Retire Early, has lots of great Facebook groups to join and to learn from. Some followers of the FIRE movement can be extreme penny pinchers and I think some of them might sometimes fail to enjoy life because they're just too focused on retirement at all costs but their basic ideas are a solid strategy for saving and investing for a very bright future now finally for some great insights on relationships in business and with friends and at home I really recommend the work and writings of the late but great Clayton Christensen he was a business professor at Harvard, and uh, he was the one who actually coined the term disruptive technology, yeah, like 20 years ago. He died a few years back, but his insights on relationships of all kinds are fantastic. To sum things up, in these times of division and catastrophe and frustration and disappointment, the best advice I've heard comes from Reverend Amos Brown of the Third Baptist Church of San Francisco when he said, don't get bitter, get better. And please keep in mind that I don't give advice. I give infotainment that can hopefully help you to get better <laughs> financially, emotionally, spiritually, and in all of your relationships. These are the things that matter most. As always, I would sure appreciate if you would like and subscribe and share my content and come back soon to watch some more videos like these ones right here and over here. And I hope to see you soon.